Namaskar. We are going to see how the crane bending is done on the silk fabrics. As we see through the process, a screen print or a serigraph is a print made by pushing ink through the screen. It is basically a stencil technique. The number of prints in an edition is limited and is true of lithographs, etchings, woodcut and other print making techniques. The number of each print in the edition is signified by a number such as 18 by 20 which means that this particular copy is the 18th of an edition limited to 20 prints. The use of screen with silk bolting cloth as a stencil carrier was developed in Europe in the early 20th century. The method most widely used today is essentially the same through more refined. The screen is a frame of wood or a metal with silk cloth or other material stretched drum tight over it. Nylon and polyester monofilament material or at the time preferred over silk by most screen printers. These synthetic fibers are together longer lasting, easier to clean, do not absorbing resins and fats, can be reclaimed after using with photo emulsion and they print more sharply than silk. Organdy, Dacron and stainless steel mesh can also be used. The stencil is either attached to or formed on the screen. The screen is then hinged to a printing support, usually a table which has registered tabs to position each sheet of paper correctly. Then ink is pushed through the top side from the special squeezy onto the printing paper underneath. Although screen printing is in principle a simple stencil process, the kinds of images which can be produced over a wide spectrum. Depending on the stencil use, the artist can produce a wide range of effects from both simple areas to fine detail even photographic designs. This wide range is broadened further by the use of various combinations of transparent and opaque colors and by printing on various kinds of paper. The stencil carried on the screen is the heart of the process since it determines the character of the images printed onto the paper. There are several methods of preparing a stencil, five of which are mentioned here. The stencil must be mode of material that will not be damaged, distorted or dissolved by the ink and must be durable enough to withstand abrasion and flexing during the printing. The paper stencil is probably the simplest. It is nothing more than a thin mask of paper or other thin material such as nylon or resitate which is attached to the underside of the screen. Ink squeezed across the screen will pass through the open areas of the mask and can be stopped or blocked from the not to be printed areas by the paper mask. Color areas printed through the paper stencil are generally flat and bold. Edge quality of these areas can be manipulated by the manner in which the stencil is made. The stencil can be cut with a sharp blade to produce crisp edges and sharp details on the edges can be torn, burnt or abraded. The stencil can also be punctured to allow ink to pass through the openings or it can be worn thin with sandpaper or a razor blade to allow ink to seep through as light film. Of course, these operations are performed on the paper stencil before it is attached on the screen. A second kind of stencil is a pro film or hand cut film. Pro film is a very thin but tough material layered onto a transparent and flexible plastic sheet. Pro film is available in a wide range of colors, all transparent to fit various uses and may be either water soluble or a lacquer type, but only the latter may be used with the water based inks. It is used as follows. The pro film is taped over a master drawing so that it lies flat 
and doesn't shift. A sharp stencil cutting knife is used to cut through the film but not the backing. And the areas which are outlined with a knife that is those through which ink to pass or lifted away or stripped. In principle, it is similar to the cut paper stencil but it can produce images of much greater detail and precision. After the areas which are to print have to be cut and stripped, the rest of the stencil remain attached to the plastic backing sheet. It is then placed under the screen and adhered to the fabric with the proper solvent. When dry, the backing support is peeled away, leaving the stencil firmly attached to the screen. The third type of stencil, the negative liquid stencil, is the most direct. The stencil consists of a thin layer of liquid blackout applied directly to the screen. When dry, the stencil is ready to print. There are no intermediate steps such as cutting or washing out. The block coat can be brushed onto the screen crisply or loosely with full brush or dry brush. It can be sprayed, dabbed or dipped or it can be applied with paper, cloth or any other tool. Alternatively, the entire surface of the screen can be covered with a layer of block coat and while it is set wet, materials such as cloth or crumpled paper press against it to remove the block out in some places. After the block out dries, ink can be pushed through the opened areas in a rich texture. This method is called negative, but the block out is applied directly and purposively to those areas on the screen which block the ink from reaching the printing surface. Stencils made from a glue such as leaf pages are used with solvent-based inks. For water-based inks, a screen filler which is insoluble in water is used. The end result of the fourth method, the positive liquid blocker stencil is much the same as the previous technique but the process leading to that results in more involved. The areas which are to print are filled on the screen with a special wax which is applied directly to the fabric. The wax most used by the screen printers is Trusty, the same material used by the lithographers. It is available as a liquid and in solid form, pencil and crayon and both forms are used in screen printing. With Trusty, many efforts related to drawing and painting and the texture rubbing can be achieved. After the tashi has been applied to the screen and dried, a thin and even coat of liquid block out is spread over the surface of the screen completely covering the tashi. The block out is repelled by the oily tashi but it adheres to the mesh in the areas where the tashi was not applied. When the block coat is dry, the touch is removed if solvent based inks are to be used and the block coat is glue. The touch is removed with the turpentine or mineral spirits which does not affect the glue. If water based inks are to be used, the block coat is a screen filler which when dry is not affected by the water. So the touch is removed with water. The areas which are originally covered by the tashi, the positive areas are now the open parts of the stencil through which ink will pass. The black coat of course remains as a stencil which holds back the ink. The principle behind the photographic method, the last stencil technique to be mentioned here is relatively simple. The film of the light sensitive emulsion either layered onto a backing sheet or in liquid form applied directly to the screen is exposed to the light through a film positive which carries the image to be printed. There are many types of photo emulsions on the market both in the liquid and in sheet form some pre-sensitized and some are not. 
non sensitized emulsions can be made sensitive to light with diazo or bichromate sensitizers. The film positive is a drawing or a photograph or other opaque image on a clear or translucent support. The positive or opaque areas of the film positive block the light from reaching the sensitized emulsion. Light from a bright source such as a carbon arc lamp, photo floods or other light sources rich in short wave or ultraviolet radiation passes through a clear or negative portions of the film positive exposing the emulsion underneath and thus hardening it. The exposed screen is then placed under a stream of water. The emulsion in areas which did not receive light, the positive parts or the protected by the opaque areas wash away leaving those parts open. The result of the emulsion hardened by the light and no longer water soluble remains to be become the block out stencil. Screens which are coated directly with liquid emulsion are ready to print as soon as the emulsion is dry. If the emulsion is in the sheet form, it is exposed and washed out off screen and must be adhered to the screen while wet. When the emulsion dries, the plastic support sheet is peeled away leaving the stencil firmly attached to the screen. Different techniques of stencil forming may be combined in various ways to complete one stencil. For example, a stencil may be composed partly of a photo emulsion and partly by direct application of the liquid block out. The finished stencil is then printed as a single one with one stroke of the squeezy and in a single color or group of colors for a split front. A screen print may be printed on its entirely through the stencil form by a single technique or by stencils prepared in various combination. Screen print composed of images printed through a number of stencils can be extremely complex. All the stencil images work together to make a final single statement. This requirement is complicated by the fact that the finished images is not revealed until the last stencil has been printed. Each stencil adds its own particular elements to the final effect. All stencils contribute some degree of modification, some more than others. The stencils are printed sequentially, one color at a time one over the other. Each color is printed in turn on all copies in the edition before the next color is applied. Thus, the size of the edition cannot be increased after the second stencil has been printed, assuming that the stencils are destroyed after each printing which is usually the case. Among the factors which influence the stencil choice are ease of preparation appropriateness to the images and the cost. An image of loose brush drawing is most easily done with tashi or drawing fluid on a liquid block coat. Although the drawing could not be prepared as a film positive and printed as a photo stencil, it would be more costly in time and materials. Only a very long printing run during which a liquid block out stencil would break down would justify its use. Screen printing or serigraphy is an infant among printmaking techniques. Its birth as a fine art medium was in the mid 1930s, but it has advanced in the technical and aesthetic sophistication so as to rival the more established forms of printmaking. No other visual art form except perhaps printing can dazzle the eye with such rich bold colors and limitless range of visual imagery. 
Let's see how the screen and squeezy as a stencil goes on. Number one, keep it simple at first. Geometrical shapes and circle is an uneven pattern or easiest and never clinch. Space them far enough apart if you are a beginner. You don't want the paper to tear when being cut. Number two, use a craft knife to cut out all the colored parts of the design. Keep the surrounding blank paper intact. You have now made your own stencil. Unfortunately, if it trips, you will probably need to start over. Excess care and precision. Make sure your stencil fits appropriately onto your shirt. If it doesn't, you will have to resize or otherwise adjust it. Number three, put your stencil on top of your material, paper or t-shirt and the screen on top of the stencil. Place the stencil so that the mesh is directly on the top. The two should be touching and the handles are facing up. If there is a space between the edges of your stencil and the edges of your screen, put masking tape on the either side. You don't want paint leaking where it shouldn't leak. If you use taping method, make sure not to tape the stencil to the mesh. Otherwise, the stencil might move around when you are squeezing it. Number four, spoon out some paint. Make a line at the top of the screen, the part farthest away from you. You don't want paint on top of stencil at the moment. Try to spoon out as much paint as you think would cover the stencil. It's a little difficult to use more than one color with this method. If you do try it, Know that at some point or other, the color will mix. If you are okay with that, go for it. Use the squeezy to spread the paint over the mesh. Try to do it with one downwards movement or the least number of strokes possible. This make it look as smooth and professional as can be. Always, always and always make vertical strokes. If you make both horizontal and vertical stroke, the paint will clump and be harder to dry and finish. Once you reach the bottom, keep going and scoop the excess paint up the handle to be reused. Lift everything up of your material. Be careful. If you drag it at all, the paint may smear. It's best to do it layer by layer, lifting up and then off. Leave to dry, the longer the better. If you print it onto clothing, then once it is dry, you need to put a sheet of greasing or tracing paper over your design and iron it. This seals it, making it wearable and washable. Let's see how the screen printing grows with an embroidery hoop. Number one, print off your design on your computer. A big, dark, simple design is easiest to work out. Print in black and white or dark colors. You need to see the pattern through the screen. It also has to fit inside your embroidery hoop. If you don't want to use your computer imaginary program, you can draw yourself. Just make sure it is the right size is dark enough and won't transfer to your screen. Number two, place your sheet fabric material in an embroidery hoop. Unscrew the hoop that opens it and pulls your fabric taunt across the base of the hoop. Replace the top and twisting the screw back in it. It doesn't matter if it is centered. You will only be using the material within the circumference of the hoop. Sheet cutting material works well as your screen. Pick a fabric that's meshy and not quite translucent. Number three, 
place the hoop on top of pattern and start tracing. The fabric should be directly touching the pattern. Use the pencil to trace your image. If you mess up, you can always go back and erase, only trace the an outline. Number four, flip the hoop fabric side up. Cover the outside of your pattern while your tracing lines are in and the layer of the glue. This should not be on your pattern. It should be surrounding it. The glue acts as a shield when you apply the paint. The glue can go as crazy as it wants outside the pattern. Just make sure it does not go inside. When you are finished, wait for it to dry completely. 15 minutes should do the trick. Position the screen in place. The sheer fabric should be away from the material, separated by the width of the embroidery hoop. Smooth out the fabric underneath the screen to create even pattern. If you have an ink squeeze, use it to apply to your paint underneath the material. If you do not use a sponge paint brush or hold the screen firmly. Pull off the screen and allow your material to dry. Be careful that you do not incur any smudges when you lift it off. If it has not dried thoroughly, the paint may run. Give it a 15 minutes time to dry completely. Iron your fabric allowing the directions on the bottle of the ink or paint you use wear away. Screen printing and digital printing. Screen printing involves creating a stencil. Printers call this a screen and then using the stencil to apply layers of the ink on the printing surface. Each color is applied using different stencils, one at a time combined to achieve the final book. Digital printing is a much newer process that involves your artwork being processed by a computer and then printed directly onto the surface of your product. Digital printing is not a heat transfer or applique as the ink is directly adhered to the fabric of your shirt. Each printing process has its strength and our art team will weigh this when deciding when to use for your designs. Screen printing is the best option for the design that require a high level of vibrancy. When printing on the dark shirts or specialty products, the ink in screen printing is applied thicker than digital printing which results in brighter colors even on the darker shirts. The fact that these products are printed by hand also allows for unique product like water bottles, koozies, mugs as the printer can normally handle curved or uneven lines. Digital printing is best used for items that require high amounts of detail orders of a smaller quantity. The fact that the digital printer does not use the screen allows for a photographic print with much more detail than the traditional screen printing. As the ink is applied thinner to achieve such detail, digital printing is best used on lighter colored shirts to allow the design to shine through. The fact that the design is processed and printed digitally allows for a quantity for one since there are no screens or physical setup. Thank you.